Thursday, the cryptocurrency market witnessed the lackluster debut of a coin, the latest tap game inspired coin to join the growing list of cryptocurrencies dubbed dust by coin traders with an initial listing price that barely registered a pulse followed by a steady decline investors and enthusiasts are left wondering is this coin doomed to repeat the fate of its ill-fated predecessors now other top gamer derived cryptocurrencies have all suffered similar fates leaving a trail of disappointed gamers and traders questioning the viability of this niche market. Uh, this morning, Solomon Amundi, co-founder Sasumis, joins me to help us understand this better. Solomon, it's nice to have you around. Yeah, nice to be on the show. Now, uh, why do top game-inspired cryptocurrencies usually have low starting prices? And how do these factors connect with how people actually feel about the market? A lot of expectations with the latest one that we saw, but then it seems those hopes were dashed. Yeah, basically, it's majorly because of um, the tokenomics, and these projects have a very, very huge supply, and um, which is why you tend to see their prices in cents. But when you talk about them, um, the rewards that people get, why it's um, dust, like it's it was called for the most recent one, um, it's majorly based on the distribution. They had um, lots of users that were participating in the project. I mean, they had to distribute tokens to over a hundred million users. Uh, you can imagine giving rewards and incentives to over 100 million people. It's very difficult for anyone to get anything reasonable. Anyone that got up to $10 should be happy. Hmm. I I'd like to understand what actually influences the price, whether it goes up or comes down. I needed to break it down for us to understand because um, there are arguments as regards um, token distribution and how that would even affect the coin's price. And we need to understand that part, um, of course, looking at the short term and the long term. Yeah, so, so basically um, it has to do with um, demand and supply. For most of the uh, tap games, um, it's, it's whenever it launches, what causes the price to start going down is based on sell pressure. So you have a system which um, most persons got incentives and um, running into hundreds of millions of dollars, and they are trying to sell this to get real money. And automatically what that means is that there'll be more sell pressure than there is buy pressure. So you tend to see the projects um, crashing in mm. price. Then afterwards, you tend to start seeing them increase in price and gradually improve over time. Now, this is when um, they've been able to find um, a base price and um, you now have um, people speculating on futuristic price and you have traders now getting in. So in the first phase, you have um, people that got the airdrop selling to get profits. Then in the second phase, you have the real traders coming in trying to trade the assets and speculate future price analysis. Mm, okay, let's also understand the ways, um, you know, top games make money. I'm talking about rewards and uh, payment methods and how that actually affects the design now, uh, the make of these uh, cryptocurrencies and their values. Yeah, so um, there, are, there are multiple ways they make money, like crazy ways that they make money. One of the easiest ways is um, in the game. So people tend to spend them um, real money most times trying to level up in the game, trying to get rewards and also rack up some, some in-game tokens. So a user, for example, might spend them um, as much as 5,000 naira. That's one user. So imagine when you have about um, 20,000 users spending that amount of money, probably monthly or weekly or thereabouts. So that's how, that's one way they make money. Another way they make money is via the social media platforms where they tend to like um, give their users tasks to go and follow them on social media and they tend to push certain contents through those social media platforms. And we all know these days social media platforms, they pay YouTube, Twitter, and all of those, they pay. So they also make money from there. Then the last way, which is like one of the most common way, is after they've listed the tokens, the team usually reserves some tokens for themselves. Now, obviously they'll sell this token in the market and the team also too would find some ways to earn some tokens in the game. Should also sell this token in the market once the project goes live. So these are like some of the ways they make money. Uh, but then I, I'm not skeptical or bothered, should I say, about the listing. Some would have thought that, you know, um, the, the proper practice should have been, uh, you know, having to list the price um, well ahead before you have people begin to um, transact or um, have their different transactions done as regards what is expected of them so that they would have an understanding of if they need to continue to um, do what is necessary for them to gain or not, more or less like influence 
their decision whether they should go ahead with a particular cryptocurrency in terms of engagement or whether or not they should shift to others. So I'm wondering what should come next? Uh, what should come first? Should it be the tasks before the listing of the prices or the lifting of uh, the listing of the prices before the tasks begin to roll in? All right, so, so basically, even with the project listing, why it can't be the listing first is because um, the tokens going live is all speculation. So people most times jump into this game speculating that they would reward them with a cryptocurrency. Now, it's ain't guaranteed yet, but over time, the project can now choose to do that. Now, that's why they don't even release the tokenomics early on. They release it months after. So all the people taking part in most of these stop games, they are just speculating. There's no guarantee that they'll even be paid any reward. So that's why it can't be the listing of the token first or price speculation first. It can't come first. It can only mm. come later. So people just need to keep playing the games, hoping that there'll be a reward at the end of the day. There's no guarantee, basically. And the team never said that it was guaranteed from the onset. They never do, actually. Mm. So, so how do you now feel about um, the negative reactions? So, let me just say the reactions that have been, um, you know, coming in as regards um, the last one that we had because um, uh, a well-known coin, as we tracked yesterday, you know, started about zero point zero one two dollars, as 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 we noted, and a lot of people had their hopes uh, dashed. How do you feel about the reactions um, that you saw on social media as regards this? Yeah, that, that's um, majorly based on ignorance and based on euphoria and hype. So most persons are quite ignorant about what happens in the crypto ecosystem. They are quite ignorant about um, the economics, valuations, and the whole lot. They are so ignorant about that. So they jump into uh, most of these platforms trying to farm the game tokens and trying to earn the reward. And they have very high and unrealistic hopes. And you wouldn't blame them, obviously, because they don't know what goes down in the ecosystem. And most likely, they are unaware that uh, most of these platforms are just used for onboarding. Basically, they are just used to onboard more persons to the Web3 and crypto ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So I feel if people can have that understanding, they would have lesser expectations from most of these platforms and projects. And also, they can find a workaround to maximize their earnings, probably by running five, six, seven, or 10 accounts to maximize their earnings. Mm -hmm. OK, so when we have more of this onboarding, does that in any way guarantee the success or, or failure of these um, cryptocurrencies? Uh, can we link it to the ability of these cryptocurrencies to actually you know, have a higher stake that can trickle down um, to the people participated in it? Yeah, distribution of um, a cryptocurrency is actually very useful and very, very necessary. Um, it just makes sure um, a few persons don't have so much power to like, move the market and move the price of that project. So distribution goes a long way. But in terms of um, price action of that project, long term, if it will, be, if it will keep appreciating over time, um, it's majorly based on the utility built around that particular token. So it's resting on the shoulders of the team and also how they keep their community together, how they incentivize their community. There are multiple ways they can do this. They can keep their community together. They can keep them incentivizing them long term and they can build lots of utility around that token, which long term obviously to help them the price of the token to appreciate. Mm. So these are like some of the ways that they can be able to achieve that. Uh, okay, so um, two things that you mentioned um, in your response has to do with um, the ignorance on the side of the people and the fact that there are no guarantees when it comes to earning. And I'm looking at what role government rules and, you know, legal regulations, so to speak, um, should play here when it comes to creating, you know, listing and even having this um, trading of top game-inspired cryptocurrencies uh, in terms of how they play, what they're offering to the people, which ecosystems in which they operate, and what the benefits should be for the people who actually engage them. I didn't get the exact question. Okay, so uh, what I'm saying is that uh, I'm looking at the role governments should play in terms of rules and okay, regulations okay. that should guide the creation, the listing, and the trading of these top games. Uh, because you talked about ignorance and the fact that there are no guarantees. Yeah. And no one wants to engage in something that it doesn't want to benefit from. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so basically, there's very little that the um, governments can do. Now, majorly, it's because of um, these games, are they found a way to like build on 
Telegram, so they are called them Telegram mini apps, build them based on the SDK that Telegram dropped. So they found a way to get to the eyes and faces and smartphones of almost everyone. We all know Telegram is a is a chat application that has um, hundreds of millions of users, and there's almost no way yet that um, the government can be able to stop people from doing this because as long as you're on Telegram, you can have access to these games most likely, and you can be able to interact with it. So the, the highest that government can do is maybe put a disclaimer. And also, from the get-go, there's no way to be able to tell that these games would find a way to incorporate cryptocurrencies into it. So they don't start off as a cryptocurrency project. Mm. So you see, it becomes also very, very difficult for government to like put them in a bracket so, so these are like most of the challenges that um, you can run into in platforms like this. But other than that, and that is actually a very, very smart way to bring on board most persons from Web 2 to like Web 3. It's a smart way to get it done. Okay. Uh, so lastly, uh, Solomon, just about 30 seconds. Uh, for this last one that just dropped, should people hold or sell? I think those that didn't sell yesterday, there's no point for them selling right now. Okay. I think they should just hold. All right. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Solomon Amundi, co-founder of Sasso Miss for sharing your thoughts with us. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. And that's it on Business Edge for today. Uh, you can follow us on social media. We are at News Central TV and, of course, our website, uh, www.newscentral.africa, and our social media handles and platforms, including YouTube, are there for you. I am Likon Obanjo. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>